Hello, we'll try that again. Hello and welcome to Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And I've had lots of technical issues today. Just lovely. I'm so sorry that I was a little late. And thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope that the sound is on now. Yeah. Ah. I literally had the camera you're looking at me on in my hand sitting here like 30 seconds before it came back on. <sighs> and despite me getting everything ready before, just a weird, weird time lately. Hi, Piccola. Hi, Amy. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Judy. Hi, Amy. Did I say Tina? Welcome, everybody. <laughs> it's crazy lately. I'm going to let the winner choose from three patterns today. And we're doing a giveaway. I don't know if you got your newsletter. I sent, sent it out right before going live. I got to make sure the close-up camera is set up. One second here. Hopefully... Hopefully it won't uh, suddenly stop working. If I go off, it's almost like it doesn't see that camera now. So I'm going to give you the top view to look at while I switch a couple plugs and crossing fingers, it will work. Oh my goodness. I was thinking about maybe teaching this in the school with you guys. I have some of these patterns already. Buds, bud berries. I think it's pretty cute. These are the three patterns that we have to choose from today. I know that uh, some of you have babies, brand new babies in your life. So there's a slumber party quilt, a jacket for wearable art. They all have equal value. And, uh, and then a subtle pillow, three different pillow designs inside of this pattern. So that's today's giveaway. If you're here at the end and you answer the question that I ask you in its entirety accurately, then you will be the winner. This is the jack-o'-lantern that I inked last Thursday. And during the VIP sew-in chat that I do for the VIP members, I showed how to piece when you when you can't piece so this is kind of appliqued but it's appliqued by being put beneath the fabrics all of a sudden my mic went off oh now my internet's gonna bog on me goodness ah all right let me check my plug really quick All of a sudden, I my internet like dropped here on my phone, so I thought that I was off. Close. Please work. Come on, you guys. Come on, cameras. Everything is upset with me. Front camera. Now we have the right number of connections okay so please please oh gosh the 
This happens after I, I've noticed, after I do a live with the VIP group. So this camera is working, the close camera is officially like not wanting to show me. So, come on. I want it show my hand. This is just so silly. These are the days when I go, do I really want to go live? <laughs> that would be pretty rude of me, wouldn't it, to be canceling it just because I'm having tech problems? I think I got a workaround if I think one of my, I don't know. I had all three of them working a second ago. It seemed like anyway. Blame the VIPs. I don't know. I'm just so frustrated with the restream lately. Can't use my buttons. I may as well be on Zoom doing it. And I know Wendy's like, yeah, do that. Cause then you can have your cell phone in there too. I may just think about using that. We'll see next Thursday what I end up doing. So we've got more than one special going on today. I have a Buy one roll of stick and tear and get the second roll half off. You have to buy two rolls to get the deal. And you can buy more than two if you like. If you're a dealer and you're interested in a deal like that, email me and uh, I'll be giving you a coupon so that you, you too can participate in this special. If you are a professional embroiderer and you already buy our stabilizer, the coupon will work for you and it should work for you. So let me know. Also over $49.99, you get free shipping. So it's a really good deal. And as I said, the, the next 10 orders that come in get a free pattern. It's a mystery pattern. And now I've got some really good patterns that I'm giving away. So you have to spend for, at least $40 to get the free pattern. And most of our patterns are valued at least $9. So... That's like getting $9 in your pocket, but in the form of a pattern. Maybe I can try the close-up camera again and show you the patterns up close. So my hand is really laying on the machine, but it doesn't know it. So that tells me it's a port issue on my computer. So if that's the case, then I can, I just have to think for a second. So now I'm on the camera. We will not do the tight version. We'll just do the regular front. I don't know if I'm blurry. I didn't have a chance to even check those settings. I'm just grateful it's on it all. I feel like it's the beginning of live all over again with all these apps. And Amy, I forgot to check whether or not it held <laughs> during the VIP. And sure enough, it's it's dry and it's held in place. So just have to hold it without holding it. And the clip made that possible. I don't know, I, I just noticed that the last like three times I did a zoom and then following that my cameras weren't functioning right. So I don't know. Everybody changed and made updates and they don't ask us if we want these updates. The creators. So if I, this is not going to be an easy thing for me. So I'll probably not use this camera much. So I'll uh, see you guys. You can see my face in a, in a little bit. We're going to let the other We're going to let the other camera be the star of the show. It, it normally is anyway. It's a little dark. I didn't get a chance to uh, brighten up my settings on that. So let's see. Just turning on a couple lights works. And are you hearing me okay, right? Are you guys still hearing me loud enough 
right where I am right now. Because if you are, it's awesome. I don't have to have the microphone right in front of me. Give me a thumbs up if it is. So see, Amy, that's not, that's not uh, stitched at all. It's just held in place. And that's a double fold and polyester ribbon. So it would definitely allow me now to stitch it and hold it in place. And this was done using the liquid based. This is partly what you get during the VIP live shows. The VIPs get to pick my brain and ask me to do things and I do them usually. <laughs> so this is a product that I used in the class and we have uh, one of the VIPs is making wedding veils and I wanted to try and see if the quilt highlights stitches on tool and sure enough it does and not only does it it it, it looks like it's woven into the tool doesn't it isn't that amazing you guys like that and that's this ribbon it doesn't seem as though it would be that way because it's so skinny but a simple straight stitch down the center of that made that happen and then i thought oh, you guys are probably going to be upset to not see me do it. So I'll do a little, I'll stitch a little bit of this, show you how it's done using our sequins and ribbon foot. And I thought maybe I can use one of these beautiful yarns that I have to go all the way around the border of this before I finish it off. If you guys want me to sew a little bit of this ribbon I have oh my gosh it's working <laughs> you guys want me to show you a little ribbon stitching and since the uh, VIPs pretty much told me what to do when making this I'm leaving it up to you the thread that I used was just the 40 weight polyfast polyester embroidery quality thread to stitch it down and I used a color that's in the fabric so when you looked at that stitch, you saw a one, one strand of thread going down the middle and it looks as if it's part of the actual ribbon because it's matching what is here. This, these two side panels were filmed two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Yeah. So last week I did this, the inking part. If you want to make this, I will have the links for this video and this video in the description below when I finish the live today. And what you can't see is that I have made, I am preparing this to be a Trapunto jack-o'-lantern. And to do that, I can't believe I have all three cameras. Thank you, God. Thank you, angels. Thank you, whoever. So here we have batting to go under the main body of the quilt. And if I pull this back and move this over, you'll see that there is a pumpkin of batting. And I use the liquid base again to glue that in place so that it can't move from beneath the jack-o'-lantern. I used the pattern, the printed pattern, which I thought I had here. The pattern I used to ink this, I used it to cut that out so I was able to get it perfect shaped. So I was thinking about adding yarn. I could, since we have the quilt highlights in the middle here, I could add a yarn to go around this one or to not detract from the beauty of that, I could go around this outer band going all the way around with one of the yarns. No leaves, not yet. <laughs> I did not have time to play, but wouldn't that be a nice yarn to use for maybe creating a yarn or a leafy Im implication of a leaf? I don't know. I can always come into, and I was thinking about, I was actually thinking about trying out the school go live they have this go live feature and i haven't used it yet is it isn't that old 
And because honestly, I don't want to have another thing to pay for. And after I get a certain amount of video on there, they will uh, start wanting to charge me for storage on the videos. And so I've been debating it. I could do that. Just come in in the uh, as an all member of the school and know that the school is free and it is create with Claire Rowley is the name of the school. So that's the actual URL for the school. And if you haven't joined yet, be sure to join. That's where patterns are posted and that I do here on the show. When you create a pattern, you have to have somewhere to store it. I store my free patterns inside of my school, Create with Claire Rowley. I feel a little naked. I don't have any lipstick on today. I know these are silly things. So these are some really interesting yarns and just to help inspire you on things that you could actually do. You don't have to use the a yarn, a single strand of yarn. You can actually use a variety of different yarns together. So here's a close-up of this. This is a company that just went to the store and bought a whole bunch of yarns and they 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 correlated them so that they looked to get, they looked nicely together and then they just joined them together on little little bolts and then they put it in a box and they charged me I think it was like $350 for this box but it's basically the convenience of you not having to go to the store and select all these different trims. And it just so happens I have purple in this. So I could do, this is going to go on the kitchen table. So I don't want it to be too bumpy. I don't want a, a glass to be put on it and this, this bump to cause it to tip over. So I think I'm leaning toward something that has a lower profile and this one has a bunch of colors that are not in the actual pattern or project i don't know it'd be kind of interesting to have a eyelash one on top i could just do the quilt highlights instead Tell me what I should do. I could actually combine quilt highlights and this together. Because with the sequins and ribbon, we have multiple, we have more than one opening in the front. <laughs> no leaves. So are you insinuating that you guys want me just to stop and not sew and just ink right now or draw out a leaf? Ah, everything's rolling away. Should I do these together or should I not care? Oh, then there's also using an orange one to bring in more orange. I'm going to, I'm going to listen to Tina. She was the first one to say quilt highlights. So we will stick with that. Maybe I'll get something actually stitched out if I don't get carried away. <laughs> My yarns are all connecting to one another. <laughs> but I'm thinking I'm going to outline the, the leaves with this. So I'll probably pop in. Tuesday of next week for an all-member chat in the school. Make sure you're subscribed and that you have your notifications turned on when you go to the school. Purple yarn. All right, I finally got them to stop misbehaving. And this is the actual pattern. And the pattern is in the school. I think I released it to the VIPs early. 
and you just basically print it out. It's a PDF document. And I'm going to quilt with the octaves, but I thought I would also do some stitching in a ditch and maybe do a little stitch in the ditch with a decorative stitch. <laughs> I rhymed. I don't play, play around a lot with decorative stitches and thought you might enjoy seeing that you can enhance a quilt using a decorative thread in conjunction with where you've already pieced something together to create a more interesting quilt. A lot of you may have had trouble doing decorative stitching and had the, the fabric get all messy looking and be wanting answers as to why that may happen. I'm wearing slippers. I have to take them off. Can't sew with my slippers on. I don't know where Tinkerbell is. Okay. I just sit there and go, what can I say? I can't control this, the studio gremlins. Thinking about the project and what's needed to be done. I've already stitched the, the pieces together. As I was saying, this was, I think two weeks ago. And what you don't know, if you didn't watch that episode is it's an episode talking or speaking about all the different ways that you can piece a quilt together because you don't only have to use a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, if a pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance, you can still do other methods of sewing a quarter inch size seam and not actually have what is traditionally considered a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you're interested in learning about that, what you see here is and before it becomes part of the quilt, or I can't show you the underside. This first one is the traditional quarter inch, sewn perfectly using the satin edge foot. And I believe I then did the liquid based glue in the seam for this one so that I didn't have to worry about the fabric shifting. This is a, a jelly roll that I had laying around. And this is the quarter inch seam allowance and then finishing the edge afterward with a zigzag stitch so that your quilt isn't going to fray apart and fall apart. It helps you to use different fabrics other than cottons. So if you use some synthetics and they fray a lot, you may be hesitant to use them for a quilt, but you can as long as you finish the edge. Uh, there was another one I did with an overlock stitch. Must be over here. Yeah. And this is an overlock stitch built into the sewing machine, a regular sewing machine. And that is then the quarter inch seam allowance in its entirety with the ability to, to use different fabrics that where the thread actually would probably break. So if you have children and they're going to jump around an overlock stitch is great. Then I went and I went, let's show the felled seam done with the satin edge foot. And it, it makes for a beautiful underside and a beautiful top side seam allowance. So two weeks ago, Fabrically Speaking Live, that is what I covered. So if you want to see how it was done, be sure to go to the playlist, Fabrically Speaking Live, in my school in, or inside of my YouTube channel. Hit subscribe and then you'll be notified every week when I go live. If you hit the bell and select all notifications. So that was two weeks ago. This was last week, the inking process. And then, as I mentioned, this part was done for the VIPs. So now we'll go ahead. And I talked about the Trapunto. We want to make sure. I could, I could secure this. using the liquid base glue so that this won't move on me. I have my choice of doing stitching down, couching down the quilt highlights without the batting or with the batting. Now, if I do it with the batting, I'm 
actually stitching in a ditch with quilt highlights, which is, I think, a really neat concept if you can wrap your mind around it. I know that the batting is not going to move here. I have to think it through because I may want to quilt the batting. <laughs> Me in the war of the batting. Yeah, this isn't going to cause any risk of breaking needles, so I think I think I could stitch it before and then I will be less likely to have a bunch of batting everywhere. I don't know. We're just going to go ahead and do what we haven't done, and that is how we learn new things. You can also take this and put a little bit of the liquid-based glue on the end to keep it from ever fraying. So after you use it, you put a little glue on it, and then you leave it, roll it up, and it won't fray. Uh, that worked out really well for also putting the yarn back into the opening on the foot. Oh, I didn't have the camera on the other. So sorry, you guys. Oh my goodness. And apparently I was getting ready to do free motion. Because I took my foot's ankle off. Hi. Sewing in Allison. Hi, Sal. Hi, Allison. I love that name. Sewing in trifocals. I should be. I used to be able to sew with my trifocals. I actually was considering trying them out this week, but now I have to remember where I had them. Anybody else pop in that I didn't say hi to? So I'm going to go ahead and use orange thread. And I have orange in my bobbin, and this is the 40 weight polyester. This is a great pumpkin color, and this is 9112, found under the Polyfast, under the threads link at creativefeet.com. I tried to make a coupon for the first 10 people. The order gets the free pattern. But I couldn't get my website to do it, so just you'll have to trust me that I am going to make sure that the first 10 people do get a free pattern. And the requirement is that you spend $40. So it doesn't take long to get to $40 when you're buying quilt highlights and threads. I think these are about $16 for this spool. Not, not to confuse this with thread, as it is a ribbon a braided ribbon that has more than one look to it when you sew it. And I did a test before, which I highly recommend you do, using the same setup you're going to have, the same fabrics, the same conditions. So if I'm going to have the batting beneath it, I should take a little bit of batting for my test. I'm just going to stitch it on the orange one. Now this foot does attach to all sewing machines. All you need is a zigzag stitch to be able to do all that it does. It also sews all sizes and styles of elastic with just a straight stitch, even on a featherweight. I did have a, a, a woman call me years back and she said, I'm not getting a new sewing machine. <laughs> Sorry, she was from the South. <laughs> I remember the conversation well. So she, she says, I have a, I have a Singer featherweight and can I, or can I not sew elastic with a straight stitch and your foot? And I said, well, let me go try and see if I can figure out how to sew elastic using only a straight stitch and not have the thread break on a garment. And it worked. So not only is this foot going to give you the ability to do decorative stitches, what I'm doing now is adjusting the guide to the needle <laughs> and it's stuck. Oh, it's because of my stitch.
once we get it started, then we don't have to hold it. So even though it's a skinny ribbon, it now spreads out. That stitch in the middle makes it expand almost. Oh, it's just, I just think it's the most interesting thing. So we could be putting this in the ditch. That's what I plan on doing. Stitching in a ditch. And look, it's, it's beautiful, even though there's batting beneath it. And rather than waste the batting, the fabric, and the ribbon, I'm going to consider that test a success. I'm all ready now to adjust needle position and not have it look bad at the beginning. Brenda didn't show up for the VIP, but she showed up afterward. <laughs> I saw all your all your react your actions inside of the school. I love that you go in there and like and share stuff. So just to make sure nothing moves. I'm going to make sure that I have enough space all the way around and I'm getting, I'm kind of close here. If I didn't double check, I'd be cutting it a little closer than I like. So when you work with a quilt and the bigger it gets, the more challenging it is to do this. Best to fold it in half. Find the batting halfway mark as well. And you can lay your, your piece on. So the batting is laying down on your, on a flat, smooth surface, which I'm not experiencing right here. Now I have my project folded in half. And I can, I want to make sure that the fabric is clearing and I'm going to, I want to give myself a little more room because I know I have this, I have enough. It's just not cut very straight. And then we take the liquid based glue and we baste it like you would with safety pins. And uh, Carleen won't be here today, you guys. She is having lots of fun today. So she wanted me to say that she's sorry she couldn't be here today with you guys. Thank you for showing up for me. I appreciate it very much. You all make my Thursdays so nice. Sorry, I know you wrote a couple like paragraphs, Allison. I didn't catch them before they moved up in the chat. So I'm going to go around and make sure that I have some on the on the edges. But you can also do like plot it out and go, okay, I would like four inch spacings of dots because I would do that if I was using safety pins, whatever your your mind feels the need for. And you just um, put individual little drops of glue. You can do like a, a grid system of every four inches. But of course, it's not that particular. A dot, a dot, a dot. And then just kind of do that. And this is sub substitute for safety pinning. So if you don't like getting on the ground and safety pinning, you, this should be very exciting to see if you haven't already acquired our water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. Liquid based is what it's called. And then you take your finger and you just kind of take the dot and make it not a dot. It's just kind of spread it out, but don't push down. Just a light grazing over the surface of that spot and then and then you take your fabric and roll it down 
and very lightly just uh, think of it as a as a cat that might scratch you if you pet it too hard <laughs> so very very light rubbing and we're going to let that side dry while we do the other half Of course, it would be better if you had a table big enough or you didn't have to unroll and roll it. Here I can see my fabric is going to behave differently here because I have that trapunto batting prep there. And if you missed it, know that this video is, you can hit the rewind button. But I do have to go all the way over because I only did one third of the quilt so far. Brandy, Brandy, hey, one of you got a pattern. One of you was supposed to get a pattern. They didn't email me. So I, I spaced it out. If you're the winner, you have to email me. It's a lot for me to keep up. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> and once again, just a little touch to uh, make those dots not blobby. And I'm going to add more on here. Because I want that batting to become part of this batting. And then roll it down. Smoothing as you go. I'm, I'm, I'm lifting. I have the quilt kind of raised up as I come down. Kind of like if you were going to put shelf paper on a shelf in your kitchen. And before you go to Ditch around, you want to make sure that you've got more along the edge. You want your edges to stay put. So we can take and insert drops close to the edge or even do a line of glue all the way around the perimeter. This will help when we do the batting or the binding as well. Don't push hard, remember. LOL. Blobby dots are the worst. <laughs> you got batting. Yes, I'm so sorry, you guys. We're dealing with my father's estate this week. So I've been called in and out of the house. My sister's in from the East Coast. So my, my shipping schedule got off a bit. But tomorrow, everything that's on order should be shipped. And I will be making pressers and thread dispensers tomorrow as well. So if you put the dots on the fabric, because I got asked that, why don't you put the dots on the fabric? Well, it's definitely easier to not get a, a blob of batting stuck on the... I got like this little string of batting. However, you're more likely to have a dot show up because it's water in there that makes that wet. And then when it dries, you, you may see a little dot. Of course, that will wash off when it's done. And you can rub your hands together to get this off or have a damp cloth handy. Let's see if I'm looking back on the chat real quick. You're training for a new career? Ah. Uh. Okay. Well, I'm glad you were able to join us today, Allison. I did notice you weren't around. So 
I, I understand about that because I am doing the voiceover for my novel, <laughs> which is taking, well, we figured out, excuse me, not getting as much sleep because I'm doing book editing at night and learning how to speak in different accents. <laughs> the For about 15 minutes of audio, it takes about five hours to record it and then edit the audio. So we now have a timeline for when the book will be available or release officially so you should be getting an email soon if you want to pre-order the novel that i've written and it's called beyond the brush strokes should you like audiobooks or there will be the audible it, it will all the print book will be first as that's generally what happens if you want to be one of the first to listen or to read my book and you're willing to do a review and i'm not asking you to do a positive review any review on the book then for the price of the kindle book you will also receive the audible version and i will be offering that in the school for you guys so you can ask more questions. There will be a sample audio and a sample text popping up soon. So you can determine whether or not you're interested in, in uh, reading my book. And then the next book will be worked on. You love audio books? I do too. I have hundreds of audio books. It's a great way to learn as well. I'm probably also going to do a podcast version of the book. You like any kind of book? It's not horror. I know that it falls under the cat category of romance, but it's going to have subgenres because it's not just a sappy romance. It's got, I shouldn't say that. There's nothing wrong with sappy romance. It's got a real um, deep story to it. It's a coming of age type of story, but even our age and even my mother when when she was still with me she was reading it and she was enjoying it so it seems to be great for women as young as like 18 all the way up so i can't wait to hear what you guys think about it all right now i'm ready to think about what i'm gonna do i can i can i'm gonna start with the Quilt highlights because it's on. <laughs> Already set up. And trim some of my threads. Because the yarn has a, a is braided, it, it will fray. After you're done stitching this, wherever the end is, it's it's at risk of unraveling. So you want to think about starting in a place where where the eye isn't going to be focused and come back over on that that end excuse me i don't have my button to mute me and after you have that that area then we, you can fold it under put a little clear nail polish on the end to keep it from falling apart but i would still like stitch a lot over that and you'll see as I'm going to do that now, get this microphone out of my way. <gasps> what am I doing? Oh, I need more sleep. The mouse. Oh, yeah. I wish I had my buttons. I swear I wouldn't say anything about my buttons anymore. Here we go. This is the product that I'm using. It's called Quilt Highlights, and it is under Supplies and Notions at creativefeet.com. You get 100 yards of that, so that's 300 feet of ribbon on there. And you can use it with a zigzag stitch, and it ends up being very tiny and subtle. 
or you can use it with a straight stitch, which is what I'm opting to do here. What a neat way of stitching in a ditch. Stitching in a ditch with, with a little bit of flair. Now, you, if you wanted the subtlety of just having it kind of show up along the edge, then you would use a zigzag stitch and an invisible thread. I don't want to waste a length that long, so I'm going to pull this back. Raise the foot a little bit. But I do want to leave enough to deal with the fraying qualities of this. So about two inches. If you have a sewing machine with a knot stitch, this is a great opportunity to use that. If not, you can have your thread be really long and pull it through to the bottom. And it's got to be beneath the foot and to the left, your needle thread. It really doesn't matter what your bobbin thread is up to. <laughs> Gotta find my foot control. Thank you for the blessings, Wendy. It's me and me and batting. So I made it shift because I had it too far that way. I'm gonna move my needle position instead to the right now to so I have it centered. And because it's going to flare out, I didn't think I should go right in the ditch. And now we have that as a finish. Isn't that pretty? It kind of covers up if you did happen to not sew a straight, straight stitch. <laughs> and I did. Because I used a satin edge foot, except for I was going to go in the ditch, and instead I'm on the curb. And that's because I didn't have my glasses on. Now I want to be a, I want it to be a frame, instead of going all the way down. I'm going to turn a corner, and I'm going to see how I do that. I'm going to lower my needle in the point, go like this, spin the fabric, do a stitch. Just kind of seeing if the bat, the way I do binding works. Lift the foot. I don't know. Too far away from it. This is when I'm going to get out my app real quick. Tomorrow is presser making day. If you don't have one of these. Come on. Where are you, Rods? I used to have a spot just for them. I do. What do I do with them? <sighs> oh, they were right where I put them. The curb doesn't have the same ring as the ditch. All right, so the nice thing about these is they have different, it's not just a point, it's also a spatula shape. And then there's one with two toes, but I think the spatula is going to be perfect for this. And I may even just take the foot off, just so I can kind of think for my first one. What do I need to do to miter this? If you're concerned about my thread having slack now. Because I want it to spread out. So this is my first time turning an actual corner.
I can pull this back and I can also pull the thread back to the spool. I think I'm going to just do one stitch, pull the, thre the thread slack back toward the spool above the tension area so that I don't have a loop of thread now. Do a couple stitches and I can pick up the foot, push that back. Now around the pumpkin area I went two rows but I thought I did one corner and it wasn't this hard for me it would have been easier in the ditch I think maybe not so I'm just hopping back a little bit there we go that worked First time for everything. And don't get too distracted, Claire, by everything. Don't look at that needle. Where do I look then? Look in the front of the foot, trying to keep the circular hole there up on top of the area or wherever you want to sew it. Could have drawn a line on the fabric as well to guide me which is how you could actually sew circles and flowers with this. Much easier on the straights. Oh, you got the bejeweled presser, Wendy? I don't remember all the colors that I make for you guys. They're all so unique. You want to be really mindful of what's going on with your trim, where it is on your table, and that you're not, you don't have it so that it's twisting. You don't want, you don't want this. Because then it won't be flat. So you want to kind of make sure that you have this roll in a place that it's not causing or pull it out pull out a length of it and have it laying nice and relaxed in front of you just don't just don't let your just don't rest your hand on it don't touch the ribbon while you're sewing very important the foot does the work for you i designed this foot the year sequins came out on a string I was I was actually sitting too far to the left. I don't know why I was sitting like that. I was trying not to lean on the ribbon. So I'm not pulling or stretching the fabric. Just keeping I got too much stuff on the table. That's out of camera's reach. Uh, scoot. That allows me to pivot and having that beneath there since my finger isn't that little. It's easier to do without all these lights and cameras in front of me. Gotta get one stitch in it. Come on, get in there. There we go. Now go back. Ah. If I can remember what I did the other day on Tuesday, I was I, I just zipped around that corner, didn't I? There we go. So when you see me hop back, I'm raising the foot. You just may not be able to see me raise it. And always go back over an area. Because you're just going to hide what you already did. Oh, just got a, too much stuff in my way. Everybody's happy with my color choices. It's like 
dropping off. Where is it going? Why is it over there? I think I actually... I had it twisted. There we go. Well, you know, mine's not perfect. Mostly because I am discombobulated here. I keep, my brain keeps thinking I'm in the ditch, but I'm on the curb and that is making me steer funny. On the curb, on the curb, on the curb. I'm not going to do anything, but it just seems so easy last time. <laughs> Tinkerbell's arrived. Get you in there. Scoot you back. Come on, Claire, you're not sitting. This is one of those days when oh, it's been one of those weeks actually have any of you had weird things happen with your electrical stuff this week Thankfully, most people will, will not stare at your sewing and, as harshly as you will. Oh, wow. The week before a daughter's wedding yeah, is rough. See, this is what I got going on. That's probably why I'm having more trouble. So it got twisted. Pulled out a, a lot more now and I'm making sure it's flat. Two of you got daughters getting married, huh? Any of you making wedding meals? Probably already done. So if it's anything like my daughter, it was like there was nothing left to be done. I don't even remember using a tool. Well, that, that time went better. Okay, make sure it's not twisted. Coming up on the beginning. So blurry. Ugh. I never got to set the focus. Okay, well, now the rest of the video will be better. 
I hope. I was doing all the bridesmaids dress hemming the week before my daughter got married and they had beaded dresses all the way to the floor. So I had them I actually hemmed their dresses using the uh, free motion because I didn't want to have to worry about beads falling off. So I folded up the beaded the beaded dress and I stitched across using free motion, no foot. Hopefully you didn't have to endure what I had to endure. Know that the liquid base glue is not permanent. And why I mentioned nail polish. So it's just froze. Yeah, I was watching another show and their their feed kept freezing. So apparently two days ago the sun released, or three days ago, the sun like released a big portion a chunk of it just is gone and so that would be an explanation for a lot of the digital issues that people are having cell phone issues and stuff so i'm just gonna lay that down and so that end's never going to come off because it's going to be beneath what i'm going to stitch on I could even take my beginning of my thread and lay it down too. And that's going to hold it in place. Did any of you hear about the sun? I also felt like there was an earthquake yesterday in my area. My world's been rocking. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to make sure I go up and over where it's crossed. And now I'm going to lower the needle. No. Yeah, I'll lower the needle. Raise the foot. Pull the trim out. Got my, my apple quick tweezers. And what I want to do is I want to fold this under and have it glued under. So I don't have to worry about it opening up. And it is perfectly fine to sew through this. <laughs> You wouldn't want to do it all the time when it's wet, but at shows I would put a drop on the needle and just let it fall down the needle and then start sewing through it and everyone would be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. Should wait for that to dry, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Now I hear Amy going, see, I wouldn't wait either. I'm going to go back and come back again. And that should hold it. Hi, Echo. Welcome. I hope you're feeling better today. I know another person that has COVID right now. Although you said you were over it or recovering. So that's a little wet and... After it dries, you can wipe it off with a, a, wa a wet washcloth. Or you don't even have to wait. You could just dampen a washcloth. A washcloth. I'm learning accents and it's messing with my, my dialogue. So what you're seeing here is a single row. And here I did a double row. So you have the option of doing single or double. And what you saw also is the the foot doing the guiding. 
the post office was having issues. Uh, people's car computers, like, I got a fingernail that's causing, I'm getting, it's getting caught, so I gotta, I gotta file it, sorry. Hopefully none of you hate that sound like my daughter does. Yay, you're negative. Right on. Okay, all's better. So going all the way around, and I still don't have it backed, and everything is held in place. Now, that's going to hold the batting in place for when I do my backing and put my binding on, which I'm debating on should I do it now, or should I wait until I do some stitching on here because when you do the type of stitching that I'm going to do which is to enhance the inking a lot of times you you can't hear me what can't you hear I might have just been quiet for a second <laughs> Oh, you can't hear the fingernail file. See, that time lapse really messes me up. So I will explain this better now. So when I stitch, I want to really enhance the flowers and come into the face and the nose. And I already did a blanket stitch around the inking, even though that is not an applique. So it makes it look as though the pumpkin is an applique. And in here, I was going to ink, <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to get it wet right now. So I will be doing that inside of the school Tuesday live for an all members. Everyone in the school is welcome for that live. And I will finish off the inking part and I can then quilt, do more quilting. Even if I get to the binding point today, if I don't get to the binding part today, then I will finish that as well in Tuesday's free live session where you guys get to talk. So kind of fun. I'm not the only one talking. So I have orange thread on right now, and I think I'll, I'll start with that and see what I got. And I have, I think I need to change my needle. Oh, it feels okay. For those of you who don't know, the the feet come with adapters. And I usually show it before I start sewing. The, the feet actually come with, as a snap-on foot, and then our adapters come with it, turning it into whatever you need it to be. And there's different size openings for the sequins and ribbon foot. So if you get the sequins and ribbon foot, you get the quarter inch guide. And these two guides are sold separate because not everyone wants to use them. But if you're going to do couching with yarn, you're going to want you're going to want all three of these guides. So this is normally affixed or connected to the foot, and the others are extra. Of course, if you get an educational special where all three of the creative feet are included, it will be in there. If you have a Bernina, Bernina has this different type of connection. This is their Bernina snap-on adapter, which you can get for our feet. Or... Where are you? There you. Or you can use our shortest adapter and a low shank adapter, and then your machine can also snap on the feet that way. If you have a nine millimeter wide machine, you're going to use the adapter in our kit with a B. Think B is best. Take your machine snap on adapter off and attach ours and put it in, in its place. And you can use your old seven millimeter wide feet with your nine millimeter wide feet. I got to mute. I'm going to sneeze. All 
Okay, I'm over it. <laughs> There's the satin edge foot, and this is a question. I think this will. So, Lorinda, the wire is supposed to be beneath the foot. It looks like the color's off on this. Sorry, I didn't. I scared Tinkerbell. Come here, baby. There she is. There's the puppy. Oh, nope. I tried to let you see her through that camera. I always feel like when she comes to say hi that she really is trying to say hi to you guys. She's like, Mommy's talking to people. I may as well go in there and see who she's talking to. She's officially 17 years old. She's an October baby. What is that? Can we get on you? Oh, you just want to cuddle, so yeah, I know. It's not four, you're early. So the the wire on the foot, the guide wire, guide pin, is supposed to be suspended inside of the U-shape of the base of the foot. If something, if your sewing machine needle hit it or and it, and it bent the, the wire, you can't get that unbent. You need to send me a photograph and an email and I'll send you a replacement part. They come with a lifetime exchange warranty, even if you are the one that destroys it. If you received it and it just is connected to the bottom, I'm the one who checks them. So that would be really hard to get past me. Doesn't mean I didn't let one get by me. Sorry, I just keep having to mute. So I, sh I can get my finger underneath that wire, but you also don't want it sticking up from the bottom. So when you have something put placed on the base of the foot, the that wire should not be touching this, and it should not be touching that channel on the bottom either. Now, if you just have it a little bit bent, or if I wasn't perfect, this is the liquid base glue in the batting. Then you can take and bend up like that. So I'm using my thumb to bend that up and then kind of push down against it and it will bend it just right. You don't want to take pliers and try to bend it because if you do it that way, well, you can bend it and it will never go back. Meanwhile, should any of you ever have a satin edge foot guide wire issue know that you can just reach out but you got to send me a photograph you used to have to send the foot back but not anymore now we just have you email a picture since there is no other foot that looks like our feet it's pretty easy for me to know whether it's mine or not doesn't matter where you bought it from because if you bought our foot from anywhere you bought it from me so now I'm removing my machine snap-on adapter and putting it aside because I'm going to quilt with the, do a little free motion. I was going to stitch in a ditch. Oh, well, I can't make up my mind. Good. <laughs> There's nothing worse than your satin edge foot not being working. Oh my gosh. I had, I was without a satin edge foot for a little bit, for about a week. We were sold out. Someone said, please send me yours. So. We had sold completely out first time and first time. And I think it was when I was 32 years in, we just happened to run out of everything. So I was without a satin hedge foot for two weeks. It was really challenging. I didn't have my show back then. So we can take this and place it beneath the quilt. And then this one goes on top. 
I have lots of videos showing you how to utilize the octahoops. I am going to go around, all the way around, I think, to anchor it. Since there's that, that batting in there, extra batting in there. This is true trapunto. Instead of flattening the white area down, I've puffed up the pumpkin area. The goal is to keep the corner of one frame against the corner of the other. And you're not able to see it because you have your quilt on top. Now, if these hoops were round, it would be much harder to tell when you have them locked into each other and they don't really lock in, but because of the shape of the hoop, it pretty much locks the quilt in place and I can spin it around and it, and it doesn't allow the quilt to do this kind of thing, which your hands can cause if you use your hands. So the bottom frame lifts the quilt up from the machine. And then the next step is to get your body in the proper position. And that's done by putting your elbows down. I have a thicker pillow for my left side and a shorter pillow for my right side. My left arm is shorter than my right significantly because of an injury. If I didn't have that injury, my arms were relatively the same length, I would have the same thickness pillows. These pillow pattern is inside the school, a free pattern for you to use. And there is a video me showing how to make these pillows in the Fabricly Live, Fabricly Speaking Live playlist inside of my YouTube channel, which if you're watching today, you're watching in my YouTube channel. Pretty sure I'm not on Facebook right now because they made a change and I still have to learn how to do that on top of all the other changes they've made. They decided to change something there. It's that time of year. I feel a change coming. All right, so elbows down, kind of like you're just sitting and talking to someone, like I am talking to you. And then you keep your elbows down and grab the frame and this little handle that's on the frame. I just dropped a pillow. <laughs> oh, goodness. So this little handle here is able to be inserted into any of all of the eight holes on all three of the different frames. So there's th three different size frames. And there's different purposes. I could have embroidered on this pumpkin using the octa hoops instead of doing what I'm doing now using the stick and tear stabilizer, which is what you are, what I mentioned earlier. So I'm trying to keep my stitch right along the edge of the blanket stitch that I used to make believe blanket stitch applique this pumpkin that I actually inked instead of appliqueing. I hope that makes sense. Is this a good view? Let me see. I can make a change to that from where I'm sitting. that better so there I've stitched it around the trapuntoed area and I'm gonna go ahead and go around the flower pretty much just outlining at this point with a single row of stitching and it's really just up to me making sure that my hand is not laying on the quilt it is going to be resting on the quilt here and that is this area over here where my arm would rest. Ugh, I might make this a little bit bigger for the first part so you guys can see better. So my arm rests over here. And I kind of scrunch up the quilt so that my arm is not laying on the quilt because I want the quilt to be able to move with just my fingers moving that. I lost my pillow. I need my glasses.
You got the pillow? Cool. What's the school link again? <clears throat> That's the school address. And there, there is a link in the description already on this video. If you were to exit the live chat and click on the more information, you'll see it. All right. I'm definitely having an allergy day. Who knows why? Now I can use a foot if this ink tends to be too sticky. And if it were just the yellow, uh, if I didn't use the ink that had the metallic in it, it wouldn't be sticky at all. But that's not as much fun. And you do, I just scoot the bottom frame and bring the top frame to it. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Thinking about what I want to do and how how I can go about it without having to tie a bunch of knots and to keep it neat and tidy. I don't know where Tinkle Bell's going, but she's she's making noise wherever she is. Like when, when children are quiet, you worry, but when the dogs are noisy, then you worry. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. I'm not steering with this hand. I'm steering with this right here. Have any of you used the hoops recently? You guys getting them out or are you still chicken? Pretty sure. I know Ellen uses them a lot. I'm not sure she popped in today. And I can't see the chat all the time and watch what I'm doing. So if I didn't make mention of you, I have the feed dogs up, by the way. And I'm going to go ahead and lower them now so you can see that you can sew with them up and with them down. <clears throat> Yeah, I love it when you share pictures. If it starts bouncing too much, then you can put your free motion foot on. Which I may do just so that I don't look like, make it look harder than it is. Down. All right. I'm going to go ahead and continue around. The outside of the jack-o-lantern where I'd already previously did a faux applique by just doing a blanket stitch around the inking what's really neat about using a, a the hoop without the foot, though, is you can't, you can't uh, pucker. Well, because the foot is what does that, makes the puckers. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. It's the little mantra that you say as you work with the quilts or the octi hoops so you don't end up hurting yourself. I think I want to go around the trunk with a brown instead of orange. So it's kind of like embroidery, but no, because embroidery you fill in. And with quilting, we're enhancing. So this is what you call thread play. And it really does enhance that flower, doesn't it? Doesn't that make it look more... Can you see it well enough? Let me bring it in a little bit closer. Maybe that light's too harsh. Mm -hmm. 
Am I too harsh? Let's see. Hi, baby. What are you doing? Uh-oh. A bunch of stuff's about to fall. Sometimes the light on the sewing machine makes it worse. It's better to have this lighting. White fabric is harder to quilt on camera. You couldn't locate your pillow. Oh, your dog took it. I'll tell you, when I stuffed mine, they were watching. They were like, what you doing? Because my dog, Tinkerbell, her her bunny kept... She had a, a bunny, and let's just say it's her first bunny. Did I put you to sleep, Ellen? You use them all the time. Oh, you hit the Z key. <laughs> I thought you were, like, <gasps> bored with me. Do I need to get more upbeat? I am a little tired. All right, I'm going to keep it closer for the remainder. I know that makes one of you happy. I don't want to tie a knot, so I'm going to go back around. I'm so relaxed when I use the octaves. Uh, if I'm sleepy at all, it does make it harder to stay awake. Something about the movement of the needle. And it's just so, it's just so easy for me now to do it. And I say now because in the beginning it wasn't. That's what the school's all about for you guys to share pictures and support one another in your development and so it's not only my photos in the school so we really do want you to post in there it's a social media site that just our just us just us quilters embroiders and Actually, Create with Claire Rowley will also be art as well. And I may do a little creative writing lessons in there as well because of the book. In case any of you are wanting to write a novel so you have that support. Stuff I wished I knew when I was starting out. Do any of you listen to podcasts? I keep forgetting to go in. Go around the middle. Also, I am preparing the auction for the butterfly machine. I'm trying to think of what day is best. You guys want me to wait until after the election? I was thinking about November 2nd keeps popping into my mind. Doesn't mean it's a good day for me. For anyone who may who may want to acquire, because it's not a it's not a it's um, not a drawing. It's a an auction to create funds for creative feet for products. Ah, I broke my needle. Hey, how many needles now, Amy? <laughs> I think that is like, is that the, I haven't broken very many this year. I've been good. So why did my needle break? It because the thread got stuck on something? No, it's, I should have changed to the foot. 
So sometimes you need a foot. And I know that sounds funny to anyone who doesn't know who I am and knows that we are creative feet. Of course you want feet. You're a foot maker. <laughs> it's been so long since I broke a needle. It was like, whew. That's the sticky paint. Oh, I'm tightening that instead of loosening it. Oh my, oh my goodness. I was practicing a, a Brooklyn accent last night until two in the morning, trying to trying to speak like I'm from Brooklyn, and uh, and right now I'm not trying. So needles, needles. So I'm going to use this super super nonstick universal needle, which was in the machine. Amy's taking a nap. This is my, this is the best, you have the best chance of not breaking a needle with this needle for sewing, for free motion quilting without a foot through sticky ink. Cause this is not, once you get into the metallics, they have that shininess to them. They can be, this is Lem, the Lemure's I still have the bottles out. Let me see. This is the one. So if you're going to quilt with, if you're going to quilt through your, you don't have to, it's still soft. It still would be able to lay on that and not feel like you're laying on, on inking or paint. This is, uh, it has a little bit of a stickiness to it. So when the needle goes through it, sometimes it's hard, especially when I did a lot of drops. If you watched me ink this last Thursday, you know that I used a, the end of a paintbrush and I did dots. So around the centers of this is probably the thickest area. And uh, so just keep in mind and I'll, I'll be continuing now with a foot. And that also makes people happy that aren't ready to sew without a foot. My seventh broken needle for 2022. Not bad. I think I did a lot more in 2021. That is what I think as well. Of course, we're talking about broken needles while you're watching. I think I broke a needle when I was sewing through a leather vest. for a friend but I think that's it not too many sometimes I do the craziest stuff and I deserve a broken needle this is the kind of open toe this is the open toe foot and one I recommend for free motion so you don't have a complete circle to kind of look around you'll be able to see somewhat better and then you need to use a screwdriver to tighten down your screw and the needle bar screw when ever you use a free motion foot you should not tighten that too tight because you can break that screw right off all right so it's going to be a little bit noisier it's another reason i don't like it but now i won't have to worry at all about breaking a needle get my elbow pads in place or my pillows glasses where's my glasses and it's getting old thing is annoying <laughs> when i started my company i was well when i invented my first foot i was 19. when i released my creative feet to the world i was in my 20s scooting the hoops up and over so that I am making sure I'm comfortable and kind of trying to see without turning, without tipping my head. I'm going to show you what's, what you have to risk. The problem with stitching with the foot is now the foot is covering up the area that I've, that I have the, that I want to stitch and I can't see. So the temptation is to take your face from where it is and to do this and look behind it 
Now, if you do that, what you do is you change your perspective to where the needle is. If you hold up your fingers right now, and if you're watching me, just hold up your finger and don't move your finger and then look at something beyond your finger and then move your head. It will look like your finger moved, but you moved. So when you do that when sewing, when you suddenly move your body, it will look as though your needle's going to sew out where you don't want it to. But if you haven't moved it, it hasn't moved. That's not going to happen. So then what happens is you move it. And then when you come back up, you have made it. I think the word is effectually. You have then been the cause of the, the stitch being suddenly off to the side. So you want to keep your body centered with a needle as much as possible all the time. Whenever you're sewing at any time, try not to zigzag your body around. Don't do this. So if you do a lot of this, you probably have a lot of um, a lot of time with your seam ripper. So, if you are a head bobber when you sew, give me a thumbs up. Tell me about it. Originally, the very first foot that ever did this movement was called a darning foot. There was no such thing as a free motion embroidery foot. It was the very first attempt at sewing without distorting fabric designed for, for socks. When we started to make, when we got synthetics, does that date myself? Socks used to be made out of 100% wool and cotton. Well, once we got polyester and once we got Lycra and, and these spandex, these different wonderful things that were able to be created once they invented plastic, a petroleum product, you know, these qualities made it so that they were, they were having a hard time figuring out how to make a stitch for a sewing machine. I actually was a consultant for several of the top name sewing machine companies, Janome, Singer, Thoth, and Bernina at the time. And we were my father is who I'm speaking of. My father and I were helping the sewing machine companies understand why the stitches they were coming up with were awful for stretch fabric. So, that, you know, they, they went, they went, well, maybe we need to just not, not move, not have a foot pushed down at all on the fabric. And that's when the darning foot was designed. It was designed basically to fix holes in sweaters and socks and and that's why they called it the darning foot it was a while after that uh, we've been teaching free motion embroidery for years not using a foot at all but then free motion quilting started to kick in and that was so hard on your hands so I, I just watching the whole history. People were sewing through their fingers. And mostly you'll sew through your finger if you look at your finger. I wasn't sure about going over the black ink with the orange. I think it I think it did a nice job. I'm sure Ellen's happy I'm using orange for that. Had I used black, it would have kind of, I think, taken away from it. I could even echo quilt around that black outline. I mean, if your desire is to create more stitching, because it's a fun part, you can get carried away and cover up everything. You don't want to do that. And this is trapunto, true trapunto. So the pumpkin is really starting to puff up. That's partly why I was able to break a needle. Probably would not have broken it had I not had a double thick batting beneath the other batting. And it was right where I did the stitching. This is working out good. I like it. I like the orange thread instead. Still, still accentuating the pumpkin, but not... but not detracting from the art. Keep your elbows down, shoulders relaxed, keep your head centered with your needle. 
scooting over. Do not think about stitch length. Your brain will help you with that. You don't need to think about that. Somebody, one of you, just told me your story about sewing through your finger. Spare everyone. It was horrible. I feel so bad for you. I can't remember who you, which one it is. But here's the thing. It's kind of like driving on a road and there's a truck coming at you. If you look at the truck, you're more likely to run into the truck. Try not to tie a knot. I'm going to come back around. At some point, I'm just probably going to be forced to. And it would normally be really challenging to go back like that, back where you were. The octa hoops make it so much easier to stay on lines because we're holding onto this. So it's more like I'm doing that. I'm doing that movement with fingers. My hand is resting on the hoop. This hoop is a is resting against the other frame. And then my hand, my pinky is resting on that frame. You just can't see it. So that stability, up, stabilizing your upper body with your elbows down, everything is resting. That's why I am so good at this is the hoop. Without it, it is, I could still do a good job. I'm not going to deny that. However, I would not be doing as good a job. Go back over. It's definitely the handle. It's all of it. The entire design, I was thinking of this for like 16 years before I released it. So it was a well thought out design and it's the gift that keeps on giving. I just, I love it. If I didn't have to do all the other things I have to do every day, I, I would do a lot more just stitching with this. And I really did want to show a little machine embroidery since we have a buy one, get one half, half off of the stick and tear. It is something that we do with the octa hoops. And as I mentioned, you could ink and embroider before you quilt. I have a song playing in my head. <laughs> as long as it's not the chicken dance, right? And if you don't know me, that song is constantly popping up. So I was thinking, you know, sometimes the pumpkins just have like a line going up and they're not all, it's not all smooth. It'd be kind of nice to create that. And that would give me a way to connect to the nose. If you aren't resistant to tying knots, you could have skipped that, but now I'm going to really think about where it's coming. It's not to the point of the nose. It's a little bit off to the side. We don't want to make it look too uniformed. And I'm going to stitch this. I'm going to put yarn there. So it's okay to stitch over those. That line is more for a guide. I think it'd be good to come back over here and put one here. Of all the things I do with sewing machine, I think inking combined with quilting is my favorite. But I am primarily wired as an artist. Should probably think about other colors of thread. Maybe another line going up the pumpkin. And you can't really tell that it doesn't look bad that I keep going over areas where I've already been. Nobody knows what my plan was. Uh, I think 
What do you think? Yeah, one there. Yeah. So this will be the next line that goes up. I needed to connect with the eye anyway. All right. This is my chance to really look at it before taking the orange thread off. And I'm going to think about this. I could do little petal, little pebbles. Yeah. I like to go around my pebbles twice. And that's because nobody knows then where your beginning and your end is. And it gives the pebbles more drama. It's going to stand out more without having to go buy a thicker thread and risk having shredded thread. Okay, so that's tie knot and cut the thread. Yes, the stick and tear is used. Well, you can use it on embroidery machines as well, not just our, not just the octa hoops. My dad invented it for embroidery machines. He's the inventor of the process of floating your fabric. So what you do is you hoop the stabilizer into your hoop without removing the release liner, and then tighten it up, and then you can score. The release liner peel off the stabilizer and know that our stick and tear is the best for not gumming up your needle so if you've ever used a sticky back stabilizer with your embroidery machine and you had needle gumming and thought it's a great idea but i can't can't stand this needle build up know that the stick and tear does not get that that's why i'm able to go live and embroider live with you guys and my needle doesn't have all that I don't have thread breaking all the time and I have a couple projects that are already hooped up and I know that I'm running out of time what time do we have 403 yeah, I'm at the two hour mark, which I'll cut that. So I will be finishing it off in the school on Tuesday. You guys can then be on camera and your mic's ready, your mic's hot, and talk as I work through finishing this project with the with the students inside of my school. And it's a free school, so there's no excuse not to join in unless you just can't make it because you got other things to do. You're a beginner. Yeah. Embroider machines are nice. I have a, I have one. <laughs> it's in a closet. I prefer to do my own. I prefer to be the the one that orchestrates the stitches. I feel like I should do something in here with yellow. And I did want to do some yellow. But it is, do you hear that little ding ding? That's my foot telling me my foot is not, not down. If you try sewing without your foot down, you end up with a bird's nest on the bottom. Why did I do that? Why did I come over? Oh, because I got to do the pebble. Didn't think. It's amazing how fast the two hours go. But there is a point at which the body just goes, or the brain. My brain. You need to stop. And actually, you guys should be 
stopping like every hour and stand up, move your legs around, do some hand exercises to keep them from getting injured. Do a little echo quilt on this. I think I did that on the others. Turn up. <laughs> Can you guys see that well? See how puffy it is? It's significantly puffier than this area, and we haven't stitched over here yet. So when we stitch over here, that's going to even push that down more. And this will give me an opportunity to paint a leaf on this. I need to paint something here because I I think my, my arm, my hand did that. My hand did it without me. It wasn't my fault. The stick and tear code is two rolls, all uppercase, two rolls. So you have to buy two rolls and you get second roll half off. And that is a limited coupon. It ends Sunday night. And you're supposed to buy two of the same size rolls. Oh, look, see, I almost didn't bring that one down. What is the longest time you guys have spent sitting at a machine in any one sitting? I gotta go around this flower. And this week's giveaway is a pattern. There are three patterns to choose from. This is what you call echo quilting going around the outside. Okay. And if you're not consistent, it's okay because only you know what you're planning to do. I could go up each petal. That makes it good. Sorry, I did that one. When you go up these centers, you don't want to come out like that or you'll end up with a funny look so it's coming back over where you already were and I think I still have some enhancements to match it and that just totally make the flower come alive they were already pretty but now they're really stunning I know I'm speaking about my own work, but that's how I feel about it. Oh gosh, I wrote it down so that I knew what to say. It's a, it's the digit number two and uppercase rolls. So the digit number two, R-O-L-L-S. It's a good time to buy, especially if you use our stabilizer exclusively for your embroidery, which a lot of people do. A lot of manufacturers that use our stabilizers as well. We send out hundreds of rolls to uh, people, people. What's popping? <laughs> oh, the flowers. <laughs> That's such a funny word to forget that I said. All right. Up the center. I don't need to go that fast. The faster you move your hands, the smaller your stitches will be. No, that's not true. The faster you run the machine, the smaller your stitches will be. The faster you run the machine, the more likely you are to break a needle. The faster you run the machine, and not move your hands, the more likely you are to break thread and break a needle. So 
What mostly causes needle breakage is the thread getting caught on something. If you don't have it fed to your machine well, which is why the thread dispenser alleviates so much of the thread problems that I would have. I'm running through the, the rules here, or not the rules, but the hints. So the number one causes of shredding thread is that your needle is too small for the thickness of the thread. And it's the front of the needle, that go, that's this line that goes down the front, where your thread needs to be able to fit and hide inside. So if you have a thread and you're getting shredding, and I did get an email from someone this morning that they were having thread shredding issues. So they're probably putting the thread through too small of a needle. But you could also get that from having your thread on the machine, on one of your vertical posts, instead of on a thread stand like my thread dispenser. And why you don't see me have as many problems, gosh, I can tell you, I can have a lot of problems without my thread dispenser. It isn't just an endorsement. I actually dreamt the design of it. I'm really enjoying this, but I can't, I can't not do that. I have to stitch that before I stop today. Unless you guys want me to stop. Do you guys want me to stop or do you want me to finish the pumpkin at least? Give me a, give me a, put an F. You can put an F in there. F in the chat if you want me to finish the pumpkin, which will be putting some yellow thread in, doing a little of that, and uh, and doing the, the stump or the, the top of the pumpkin, chopping it off. So the thread dispenser is what you see here to the side of my machine. And the thread that I've been using has been sitting on my stand. This little orange spool right here. And then it goes straight up to an eye hook and then comes to the machine. So if you're using these little cones of thread and you try to put the cone of thread onto your sewing machine, because they are designed to unwrap up, not to come off sideways or to be pulled by being on top of the machine that causes the thread to to get to get tightened up against the back of the needle and it happens sporadically so it's not happening all the time to you but every once in a while all of a sudden your thread will break maybe the needle breaks as well and the thread becomes looks like an accordion all scrunched up above the eye of the needle and that happens because when the needle goes down and the thread pulls suddenly, when the hook of the machine that comes behind the needle to pick up the thread tries to go behind the thread, it hits it instead. And it, it's very sharp and pointy. So it cuts a little, a little, it damages the thread just a little bit. And then when the thread comes back out of the eye and then goes back in with its little injury, as it comes in, it just bunches up. And then you end up with a skinny little thread with all this fuzzy stuff above. So using the correct size needle for the thread is super important. And the other important element is, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you lots of data right now because I'm coming up with a question to ask at the end for the prize. So I hope you're paying attention. And I know some of you are going, oh man, she's giving us a lot of facts all at once. This isn't fair. That's a lot. Which question is she going to ask? I don't know yet. So I'll say whatever color is the closest. I was going to do yellow. I'll give you this to look at while I. Oh, I think about sneezing. We're both sneezy. Having Trapunto in a table. <clears throat> A table runner is great because it's a hot pad built in so you can set something really hot right there but you're probably not going to want to put anything on that because it's so cute. I'm really happy with this and so I am motivated to finish it so that I have it on my table as soon as possible. 
Oh, I didn't say that word right. Top. All right, finding some thread. Yellow and purple thread, I think. I need some brown, huh? I did just get some, a shipment in of the thread. So after I'm done with the live, I'm going to update the inventory. <clears throat> it shouldn't take me too long to do that. So if you're going to buy thread and you don't want me to, you don't want to find out I got the thread in and you missed out because, or you, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right. What color first? I think, I think I'll do that because I'm more hesitant to finish it right now. I want to play with the yellow. What do you think? Should I do the dark color? Yeah, I think I should because there's so much of the light. And I could actually take this into the middle and make and even even give it more accentuation. That's what's so fun about this is what's one of the fun things about this. The thread play part is really fun. And as long as you don't have your backing on, it doesn't matter how much thread you're laying out there. After I'm all done, I'm going to back this and then I'll be going around the pumpkin again one more time. And I'll do the stippling in there, so I'll save that for after. This is the thread play part that I tend to like to do with no backing. So I don't want to get too carried away before... I have to find a backing. I think purple might be the the adequate backing for this. It really doesn't matter because it's going to be behind anyway. That's too small. That'll be a good one. It's going to be on the bottom. I know I have a lot of this somewhere. I don't have to decide right now, but this one kind of looks good though, huh? It's almost too nice to use as a back. And I could do regular traditional binding and have it come up to the front to frame it. That would be a nice frame. But I tend to like to try to show you different types of binding techniques. And we can use a satin stitch binding, go around with a satin stitch and maybe add this to it as well. But that'll be next Tuesday. For right now, I'm just gonna finish the pumpkin quilting. And when I switch to yellow thread, I will normally change my bobbin so that I don't have to worry about orange orange bobbins right coming up to that. However, you can see that my tension is balanced pretty well, that it is in fact pulling the needle thread down instead of the other happening. And so see, if that were on the back of your quilt and your fabric were there, you probably would be a little disappointed in that appearance 
And that's simply because I moved my hands fast. So right here, that look right there. And that's moving too fast, speeding, <laughs> speeding around the corners. Because see, it's fine. And then I went, boom, that time I went too fast. And the machine is just, you know, trying to keep up. So this is a lot lighter than the orange bobbin that's in there. But it's not too dark for this or too light for this. So I'm going to leave the orange in for the, what is it called? The stem of the pumpkin? Are any of you making pumpkin pie from scratch? I usually get the sweetie pie pumpkins and make a pumpkin pie. I don't know. Don't know if our family's getting together this Thanksgiving. All right, so we know what purple. And maybe at very least I can try going live um, using Zoom instead of Restream and see if I can't add the cell phone as a camera. I don't want to get you too excited. But if I do Zoom and I do the live, I it would be like this. Make it so you're... You can't talk and your cameras aren't on. I think there's a way for that. I'm paying for all kinds of services on there I'm not using. There we go. I think this would be actually kind of cool. Maybe not. No, I think I'll stay away from that. Stay away from that. Dark contrasting colors are going to really show up. Oh yeah, before I... Before I go and put the backing on, I want to sew the yarn on. A, a, a crust-less pumpkin pie? What is that? Pudding? Pumpkin pie pudding? I'm trying really hard to be good this year. On my sugar intake and my carbs because it affects my voice so I do have a tendency to be allergic to wheat and even cassava flour doesn't I don't do well with it enough talk of food I'm getting hungry is what it is and we're talking about pumpkin pie I gotta think about the top of this. It has lines to follow to imply that shape. There we go. Oh, see, it's kind of. I just think that's so nice. It looks a lot like almost cartoony, but not. And you can just go over the dark areas with the thread or the dark ink. And despite having the foot on and risking having some puckering, Managing to do all this without having any. So do I, do I, do I? I think I do. So I will be going around the entire center. By really just trying to create a little bit of a, of a shadow in the pep in the petals, but now I'm like, ooh, yeah, we should definitely, we should definitely go around and do one echo quilt too, because we have that dark ink. May as well. 
Red play. Come out here. Don't go too fast so you don't have the messy look on the back. That's me talking to myself, by the way. Cannot. not? Did, were you guys able to see any of that? Was I in the way? Oh, what, what are we doing? Now we got talking about butter. I got you all the time. <laughs> is everybody getting hungry? What is on your sewing table right now? And what's what are you guys cooking tonight? Help me think of something to cook. When I'm done, I'm always like, man, I wish I knew what I wanted to cook. But I'm still coming down from doing the show. Always have the... Always have that needle thread under the foot to the left before you begin. I got a little confused, so it's better to go around the circle and come up and then do your echo quilting last. So basically, the more thread you lay down, the more interesting it is until you cross the line and go too far. And when you go too far, you have been essentially flattened everything out by putting too much thread down. There's that risk of that. One more. Double. Fried chicken. That's something I can't. Getting takeout. I wish we had a healthy takeout. All right, so come up and down. And I'm going to use the yellow. Mostly, I'm actually debating on it. Maybe I shouldn't. The only fried chicken I can have is uh, Chick fil A. And that's questionable because I was allergic to peanuts and they use peanut oil, but the rest of them use oils that are not good for me. And I need to be healthy for you guys, right? Stop. It's time to stop. If I go any further, I'll, I have run the risk of not having any Trapunto look. And I will do some close-up shots of this so you can see it better and have that in the school. One question. Should I go in here and go around the yellow? Because it will kind of create that, that edge of the thickness of the pumpkin. I don't know. I think I should leave it. I think it's, I think it's done. All right, what question do I ask? I taught you so much today. Do you guys feel like you learned anything?
when I adjusted the camera, it really changed the, the look of that. The colors. This is more what the colors look like. What do you think, you guys? Is that cool? It's so puffy. And that was so easy. I didn't have to stuff it afterward. We stuff it before. And now we still get the backing on there. Yeah, and that's the other reason why. You get too carried away, then you don't have anything to stitch. <laughs> when you have your backing and you do want your backing fabric to have some some of it stitched through or it will wash funny healthy body healthy voice yes oh panera bread yeah a lot of wheat it's good though i think i just mix myself up a good salad <clears throat> And it's, it's good size. Look how big it is. Isn't that nice? It's a good size. I love it. I'm also fine with it. Fine with having another table topper. Can never have too many table toppers. My pillow is both ran away every once in a while one will drop and it'll roll away i'm like no it's too far tinkerbell tinkerbell what am i going to ask you so i broke my needle and then i had all these things i said in a row and a lot of them some of you already know and but some of them i was thinking you don't know you didn't know that and you didn't know that should do some stitching in a ditch. We'll see how much time we have together on Tuesday. Should have made a note. Oh, excuse me. All right. This is a tough one. You guys ready? Whoever has the, whoever lists the most correct in their answer because there's lots of reasons why this happens so whoever lists the most first gets the prize and the question is what makes the thread shred up above the eye of the needle and there's several different things that makes that happen so you guys have a chance to type know that i am the only one that sees the first person's answer come through even if you're looking at the live chat because it's on a time delay and i will announce the winner during this session so we do not have any debate later if your name is not announced you did not win even if you think you did after they finish finalizing the video because all live videos take a little bit of time for them to finalize pick up especially a live that runs almost three hours long like mine remember there's several different reasons you want to have all your answers in one answer that's the trick right think this would be a really cool thing for you to lay on huh you want to check it out you want to see what it's like? Hmm? Uh, feel that? No? That's not good, huh? But I was thinking I should make a big one of these for you. What do you think? Would you like that? Would you like a big bed like that? It would be perfect. You could like curl up in a ball.
I only have one monitor still, and it's far and tipped at an angle, so bear with me. So I got too big for a needle and caught on something. So Roxy's got two, and she was the first to say anything. Wrong side's needle is a little vague, but it is kind. It is correct, but wrong size needle for what? And then Bonnie, you're trying to answer in separate posts, and it's, it's supposed to be in one post. And I have to make it a little bit difficult, is the point. And Brenda, you added extras that uh, don't cause that. But you did get jumping from the spool and the wrong needle for the thread. So I think I need to have like a, a time out, like, all right, time's up. <laughs> Tensions off thread caught, pull to, pulling on the fabric, no foot on, nope. But I think I know what you were trying to say, Ellen. What actually makes the thread shred is the hook of the needle damages the thread. And that's caused by, number one reason is having too, too small of a needle for the thread's thickness. And number two, that it's not being fed to the machine right and it gets caught on something. Roxy had both of those and she was first. The other reason for your thread shredding up above the eye of the needle, um, pretty much those are the two that would cause that to happen the most. We can always say that I also did happen to this time use ink that made it sticky, which made the thread come too thread too close to the back of the needle, and that made that made my needle break. But it also made the thread break first, which is what made the needle break. So the thread dispenser makes it better because then your thread doesn't get caught as easily. So I actually you were you were seeing the solution. And Madeline, Madeline, did I get you your gift or your, your prize? Somebody's supposed to get this pattern and I can't remember who it was. I can't remember which video, which, which lesson I was on. I'm hoping I made mention of it somewhere. Hey, Tink. The thread is too big for the eye of the thread. Metallic thread can shred because it comes off the spool cur curvy. Yeah, but it all happens because the hook hits it. Because it's getting stuck from... And the metallic thread is is nylon thread inside and it stretches. And so it comes closer to the back of the needle. You feel hot. You hot? You have a fever? So, um, Roxy is today's winner. Roxy Diane, I don't really know who you are, like, from that name. So you need to email me in the school and let me know who you are. Give me your address and stuff so I can send you your prize and so you can pick out which pattern you want. You get to pick from these three patterns. And so maybe you can have the answer for me for that as well. There is a there is a baby quilt. I don't know how big that is. I don't know how big this quilt ends up, but it's cute. They got dogs with bones sleeping. It's very cute, actually. 
probably not very big. It's a baby quilt. And so it look, you'll be able to utilize the creative feet the, for applique, and you could get into the free motion like you saw me do. You could even maybe ink your own dogs and cats. So using what I've taught in this three-part session, you could use for that and have, you know, do another take on it. This is a, the other option is a pillow pattern. And you could do the same thing. You could ink some fabrics to create your own fabrics to then incorporate into these pillows. And then this one, this is, I thought it looked a lot like Halloween-y. So new moon rising, a quilt jacket pattern. Same thing's true. Got that big circle on the back. You could ink something, maybe not this, but something fall-like or whatever type of design you want it to be and make this utilizing all of the same techniques that you saw in this three part will be four part session the fourth part will not be a fabrically speaking live session it will be a session inside of create with claire rowley my online school if you have yet to join Create with Claire Rowley, you want to make sure you do so today. This is the address right across my face. <laughs> you want the pillow? Good. What is it? Yeah, email in the school, then I'll know what your real name is. And uh, and for all of you lurking in the in the background, Thanks for hanging out with me today. It's kind of weird having that be on my face. We'll do this. And all of the links that you need are in the description of the video already. If you've been watching on Facebook somehow, because Facebook made changes and I, I, I don't know how I have to figure it out. Someone's got to do a video that I watched to see how they figured it out. So if you've seen a lot less videos on Facebook this week, it's because they suddenly made a change to how our video, our live streams come through. And if I had someone that was working with me and making sure all the techie stuff happened, it would be great. But uh, that would be my son and he's too busy. If you have yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. If you like this video after the live is over, and today is October 20th of 2022, and I'm ending, it looks like I'm ending again at 444. Last week was 444 as well. I like that serendipitous. 444 my time. Next, next week, we're still in October, but we're coming up to when you guys change your clocks and I don't change mine. So make sure you're always looking for what time is it in Arizona to, uh, sorry, she looks so cute with her little paws sitting here. All right. Like this video afterward, make comments in the comments. If you have any questions, if you're seeing this and it's not the 20th of October in 2022, you're watching the replay. Thanks for watching. Make sure you join Create with Claire Rowley at create.clairowley.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. I love you so much. And I will see you next Thursday. And all of the students, I'll see you on Tuesday in the school. Don't miss out. Make sure your notifications are turned on in the school. Bye, everyone. Happy Halloween-y coming up. Why wasn't it stopping? All right.